Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips for new college instructors, as well as a lot of ed tech tutorials more recently as well. And so today is actually about this, this you know, website, YouTube, and how educators can use it to kind of organize all their video lessons if they're not using Loom. Uh, so I do have a tutorial for Loom as well, but if you're gonna add you know, overlays or more audio functions to your video lessons, then you'll have to actually download them from Loom you know, edit them and then upload them and I think YouTube is a good place to upload them too. And so I'm going to show you some basics to give you a sense of how to make sure you use the site, you know, in good ways when you're using it to teach. So this video will be quite short because I'm just showing you the basics of using YouTube to kind of compile all your video lessons. If you want to know more about, you know, editing your video lessons or like embedding questions using Edpuzzle, those kind of videos are linked below in the description. But basically here, you're going to go to YouTube and you're going to sign in using your Google account, your Gmail account, and then up here, you'll basically have these options, and one option will be going into your studio, your creator studio. So let's say if I go here to your channel, you'll see, you know, my regular channel. And then if you go here again, you'll see YouTube studio. So this is where you want to go to. And once you're there, you can go ahead and create and upload a video. So when you do that, you can select a file or you can just drag a video onto it. And this is where your video lesson will be. And so you can go ahead and give it the title you want. Uh, the description will be blank. I have some stuff that is automatically added to it, but basically yours will just be blank here. And so you can add whatever description you'd like. Maybe there's certain instructions for your students or just describing what's going on in the video. So once you do that, kind of going down here, you can add a custom thumbnail if you'd like. If not, you can choose one that comes from the video itself. Um, so again, you can choose which one you prefer there. Playlist. If you're teaching different classes, you might divide them into playlists. So you can have a playlist called English 101, another one called English 125, and so on and so forth. So that can be an option here. To create a playlist, all you need to do is come here to Playlist on this toolbar, and then click New Playlist. You can add in the title and click Create. You can add whether or not it's public or unlisted. So again, you can make these unlisted, so only people who have a link to the whole playlist can access it. So as you see here, you can just click a certain thumbnail, and that's what students will automatically see when they see this video before it starts playing, or you add your own that you create. Now with YouTube, you have to make sure that you say whether or not it's for kids. I teach college classes, so obviously mine are not for children. Keep going down, and you can have more options. Uh, obviously, none of this is relevant. You're not being paid to create these videos. You know, as far as YouTube goes, you're not getting advertisements or anything like that. You can add tags, but there's really no point because you're not making your video searchable to anybody. It's for your students in particular. And then if you want to, you can upload subtitles that you created, right? Um, one good thing about YouTube is that they automatically create subtitles, and then you can just edit them after the fact, and I'll show you how to do that soon. To edit the, the subtitles, you just go ahead and click into the video. Down here, you'll see subtitles. And then go ahead, these are automatically published. You click and you say, I want to edit them. They'll appear here next to the video. You can say edit. And then here's where you can go ahead and change as much as you need to. And then add punctuation, make sure it's the right words, all that. Click save changes and you'll know that you know the changes have been saved. Your video will actually have the CC symbol next to it showcasing to viewers that, you know, the closed captioning has been reviewed and edited to be proper. So you go ahead and do that, and you have it closed captioned. So you keep on going. You can, you know, choose whatever features you want here. And then eventually you go to next. Now, adding an end screen, it's not really needed, but basically what that does is at the end of the video, you can say, you know, you can add a second video, so you can have, like, it's easy to go from one video to the other, because when you click add here, and let's say you add one, 
then you can choose, okay, here's another video. So maybe your students know, well, after watching this current one, the next one that you want them to see is right there appearing at the end of the video. So they can click it very easily. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to do that. Um, adding cards, basically what that means is, let's say you have the video playing, and you know, 12 seconds in, you say, you know, if you don't understand this, remember to see this other video. Then you can say add card, and you can link that other video right there at that point in time. So you can link it here, or you can find it from your you know, archive. And so once it's there, students will know, oh, actually, yeah, I'm confused about that. Let me click here and go to that other video. So that's an option as well. When it comes to this part, this is key. So you want to go ahead and click unlisted, because that means that you can just send this link to your students and they can access it, but the video isn't searchable on YouTube. So even if someone puts in the exact title, they won't find your video because it's only viewable to those who have been given the link. So this is what I recommend rather than private because that takes a lot more work. Unlisted is the way to go. And so you go down here and you click save. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and copy the link again and again, send it to whoever you'd like. And there it is, right? Um, and so whenever you need a link again, you can also go to your regular channel or you can just click here and click get shareable link and at, send it again to your students. If someone asks for it and they can't find it, you can do it that way. And, and so that makes it really easy for your students to access these videos because the files can be quite large and not work well embedding it into your LMS, right? Or your website, whatever it is you're using. So having them all stored here is really helpful. So if you're not gonna do anything major to the video, it's just like a simple, you know, talk through screen recording that just requires some slight trimming. I recommend using Zoom, uh, Loom instead because they, it automatically creates links that you can send to your students rather than having to upload them onto YouTube. I do have a tutorial on Loom below that you can check out. Uh, but again, this is nice and short because it's all just the basics of using YouTube as an educator. You really wanna make sure that your videos are unlisted. Something else to keep in mind, if you go ahead and go to more options here, something to point out is the comments. So you can actually choose the comment visibility. Allow all comments, hold potentially inappropriate ones, hold off review, or don't allow students to comment at all. So I do this one just because of my, obviously my channel is public. Uh, you might wanna have no comments, so students know that they, if they have any questions or anything to say, they have to go to your LMS, uh, maybe your discussion forums, or send you an email. Or you can obviously allow, you know, all comments for review so they can't be seen until you, you know, say yes, they're appropriate. You know, have YouTube do the, figure that out for you or allow them all. Personally, I think you just have to decide, you know, do you want to have to reply to comments on YouTube or would you prefer having it all on your learning management system or having them ask that in class, you know, in person or via Zoom, however you're holding classes. So this is where you go to decide how comments work with yours. Uh, allow embedding, you also might want to consider taking that off. Though again, you know, unless they have a link, they can't really use it. But you know, in this case, if you take that off, then you can't embed this video anywhere else online. It has to be seen on your YouTube channel. So you know, again, you can keep that in consideration. And then when you make changes, you want to click Save here. If you have any questions about using YouTube in this way, go ahead and ask them below and click like and subscribe as well if you haven't already. I'll see you next time with a new video.